Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Bex here today to share a good-sized book haul with you. I've been collecting these books since May, so it's been over the last seven months that these have been accumulating. I don't think I've paid full price for any of these books. Oh, nope, that's a lie. There is one book I did pay full price for, but everything else was secondhand, either from Value Village, Goodwill, friends, and in one case a publisher sent me a book. So always nice when you've got a collection of books to share and you didn't really have to spend too much on them. I have majority nonfiction here, which is not surprising for me, and since it is nonfiction November, I will start with the nonfiction books and then end with the four fiction books that I have. So if you are curious to see what I've acquired over the last number of months, stick around. The first book that I have to share with you is The Art Detective Adventures of an Antiques Roadshow Appraiser by Philip Mould. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I don't know for sure. This was a random find. Never heard of this book before, but I did grow up with Antiques Roadshow on the TV, so I'm very familiar with the show. And in recent years, I have gone down YouTube rabbit holes of watching clips from Antiques Roadshow. So I thought this sounded like a really good book for me to try. Philip's area of knowledge is paintings, so each chapter in this book focuses on a particular mystery surrounding a painting. One of the examples on the back of the book is a Norman Rockwell forgery, and I went to the Norman Rockwell Museum as a child many times, so add that in, plus the Antiques Roadshow angle, my minimal art history knowledge, and I think we've got a very interesting book on our hands. The second book I have to share is one that the publisher contacted me about, and it absolutely sounded like something I would read, so I said yes. It's Sex and the Single Woman, 24 Writers Reimagined Helen Gurley Brown's cult classic, edited by Eliza Smith and Haley Swanson. The book Sex and the Single Girl was published back in the 1960s and it was a very popular book at the time. I've heard about it before, but it didn't really seem like something I would want to read in today's day and age. So the fact that this book now exists is kind of cool. These essays are going to talk about things that never would have been covered in the original book back in the 1960s. There's even a note on the back saying that the publisher wouldn't let her talk about abortion. But that will be discussed in here along with many other things like interracial marriage, polyamory, IVF, queer and trans womanhood. So we're really just sort of updating this uh, original text for today, but reimagined by all these different writers. And I thought that sounded really cool. The third book I have is The Spy and the Traitor, The Greatest Espionage Story of the Cold War by Ben McIntyre. This is one I've seen around. My sister has read this, is reading this, so I was aware of it and when I spotted it at the library book sale I had to snag it because it already sounded interesting to me. This is about a MI6 spy, Oleg Gordievsky, who was deep into the Soviet Union. He was a top KGB official, but he was taking information that he was getting from the Soviet Union and passing it on to British intelligence. And at the start of this book, it seems like he is ready to escape. He's ready to come back to the UK and leave Russia. So it sounds like this is going to cover his story and also the plan to get him out. Next, we have a nonfiction book that many of you will recognize, and that is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. This is one of those books that has been everywhere. It's been so many places that HBO actually made a film out of it starring Oprah Winfrey and Rose Byrne, and it's even on this edition. And so I will probably read this book and watch the film. But this is a book that my mom, who enjoys reading but doesn't read that much, has already read. My sister has already read. Uh, Leslie's now read it. And so there is a bunch of people in my circle who have read this book, and I have not. And I really should because this is medical nonfiction that also touches on things of like race and, and class. And so it is sounds like it would be the perfect combination of a book for me. If you have not heard of this book, 
Uh, Henrietta Lacks was a woman who had cells taken from her body in 1951. Uh, she did not consent. She had no knowledge of this. Her family had no knowledge of it. And scientists took these cells because they had uh, unique properties to them. And these cells, which are now known as HeLa cells, have been used in many different scientific developments, including the polio vaccine and other things. And so this book is about getting justice for that family. It's going to be a very intense read and I'm sure I will get very angry, but I want to really understand this story like everybody else has. I then have Code Girls, The Untold Story of the American Women Code Breakers of World War II by Liza Mundy. This is another book that was on my radar, but I didn't have a particular pull to read it. Then I saw it at the library book sale and said, yes, you are coming home with me. This one talks about many women who were recruited into the US Army and Navy during World War II to be code breakers. These women came from all different backgrounds, from small southern towns to posh New England universities, and they were instrumental in helping to break German and Japanese military codes. They helped shorten the war and probably saved a lot of lives in the process. So I'm going to learn all about them and what their job entailed in this book. This is a bit of an odd entry in a book haul, but I did want to mention it because it is a book that I paid for. This is the one that I paid full price for. It is Dream Guide, an unofficial guide to Disney Cruise Line by Adam Hatton. If any of you watch Disney vlogs on YouTube, you may know Adam Hatton. He's a UK vlogger who specifically focuses on the Disney parks, and then he also does a lot of Disney Cruise vlogs. I am a fan of Disney parks, and next year my sister and I are going on our first Disney cruise. It'll be my first cruise ever. And so because I have no real idea what to expect other than what I've seen in different vloggers' vlogs, I decided to buy his dream guide that he has. It's very well put together. It's on really nice glossy paper. There's a lot of pictures and diagrams and just kind of explaining things that I would never have thought of as somebody who has never been on a cruise. And so, yeah, I just wanted to mention that here because it's a fun, fun little book. I will not be traditionally reading this, but I have already flipped through a bunch of it and kind of noted some things uh, regarding like questions that I had. So we're really switching gears here and going from happy, fun Disney cruise stuff to indigenous history and rights. And I picked up A Knock on the Door, The Essential History of Residential Schools from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. This is edited and abridged from the original documents that were released by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I think it was back in 2015 that that came out. I can't believe it was that long ago if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah, this, it was hundreds and hundreds of pages long. I've looked at it online. Uh, because I had some interest in reading what was in there and I knew I couldn't read that many pages on my laptop. It would just give me massive headaches. So when I saw this book in uh, Value Village, I was like, this is perfect because it's taking certain aspects of that whole, all those documents that came out and putting it into a specific book uh, released by the University of Manitoba Press that's talking about the residential school aspect. I imagine it'll be kind of like when I read 21 Things You May Not Know About the Indian Act by Bob Joseph, I tabbed the crap out of it, so I'm probably gonna be doing the same with this one. Uh, so it'll be a bit more of an academic read, but something that I'm very interested in learning more about. The next book is actually kind of related because it's a memoir by an indigenous author. It's From the Ashes, My Story of Being Métis, Homeless, and Finding My Way by Jesse Thistle. Uh, Jesse grew up in really unfortunate circumstances. He was abandoned by his parents at a young age. And so after spending some time in foster care, he went to live with his paternal grandparents and they really clashed. He ended up getting involved in drugs, alcohol, which led to addiction, petty crime. And at a certain point, I think he, he hit his lowest low and realized that if he didn't change something, he was gonna die. And so this book is about that journey down and then coming back up and sort of finding his way back to 
his indigenous roots. This is a fairly popular book in Canada. I've seen a number of different people reading it, so I'm very curious to see what I think of it. I have another Canadian-focused nonfiction. This is The Skin We're In, A Year of Black Resistance and Power by Desmond Cole. This book came out in 2020, and it has been on my list of books to get to since then. So when I saw this copy at the library book sale, I was so excited. You know when you go to a library book sale and you expect to find some stuff that you're semi-interested in, but then you're like, oh man, if I could find a couple of these books that I really want to read, that would be great. And that's like, you find one one of them and it makes your whole night. That was this book for me. Uh, it's not a very long book but it's going to cover the year 2017 and what happened to Black Canadians in that year. 2017 has special significance because it's the 150th anniversary of Canada as a country and so it's kind of taking that idea of 150 years of history and showing how things have not really changed in some ways in terms of how Black Canadians are treated. This is another book that I've heard a lot about. I'm really looking forward to reading it and learning stuff uh, that really will hit close to home. The last nonfiction book I have to share with you is one that I saw multiple times when I was going into Goodwill and Value Village and I finally decided to just pick it up and see what it was about. Uh, I, and I ended up getting it obviously and that is An Imperfect Offering Humanitarian Action in the 21st Century by James Orbinski. This is written by a medical doctor. He was one of the founders of the Canadian chapter of Médecins Sans Frontières, which is Doctors Without Borders. And because of that medical angle of things, uh, I was interested in it, but also because James then uh, traveled to a number of different countries beginning when he was a medical student to offer aid. I think he first went to Rwanda to help with pediatric AIDS and that sort of launched his humanitarian action. It's going to talk about things like famine and civil war, so it'll be a very intense read, but because of that humanitarian rights angle and also the medical angle, I'm very interested to see what's contained in here. That is all the nonfiction that I have to share, so let's wrap things up with the four fiction books that I've picked up. The first one is The Black House by Peter May. This is one I've never heard of, but my friend Rachel was getting rid of it, and I always enjoy having one or two sort of crime mystery thriller books on my shelves because you never know when that the mood is going to strike. This one is about a detective inspector who has to go to the Isle of Lewis in Scotland because there has been a brutal murder and it's one of those books where the person investigating what has happened is from the place where they're going back to so our detective inspector is from the Isle of Lewis so he's returning home and going to uh, be you know mixed with all the, the potential trauma of their past. Stuff will, I'm sure will be a bit creepy because we don't really know what's going on. Very, very moody kind of book. So yeah, I thought it would be fun to read and hopefully a page turner. The next book is one that many of you will recognize and that is My Brilliant Friend by Alea Ferrante. I have mixed thoughts about this book, mixed feelings, because so many people have talked about it and so many people have loved it. There's been a small subset of people that I've seen that haven't liked it, but I'm, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna feel about it, but it was also at the library book sale for like $2, so if I'm gonna try it, now is the time. And so I picked it up. This, it seems like it's going to follow a relationship between two women from when they are childhood friends up until adulthood, uh, taking place in, in Naples, in Italy. So we're not only seeing the changes in their relationship over time, but also the changes in Italy during their lives. So like that's, that intrigues me. I don't know how like literary fiction it's gonna be. And me and literary fiction, you know, we. We kind of get along, but we kind of don't. So it really depends. I'll give it a try and see what happens. Second to last, I have A Town Called Solace by Mary Lawson. This is like 50% a cover buy, I will say, because this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Like it's so pretty to look at. But the other 50% is because I have heard 
one or two people on booktube talk about this book and say really nice things about it. This book is going to follow three different perspectives in a small northern town. One of them is a seven-year-old girl whose sister has just run away and she's watching the elderly neighbor's cat while the elderly neighbor is in the hospital. It seems like that neighbor is going to be the second perspective. And then we have the third perspective of a man named Liam who maybe has a bit of a iffy past and he moves in. Uh, next door and so it sounds like their lives are all going to intertwine which you know this is definitely more literary fiction but I it sounds like it's going to be a bit intriguing very character driven by the sound of it but that that 50% of this cover pulling me in all right here we are the final book of the haul I picked up Akin by Emma Donahue I have read three books by Emma Donahue, Room, The Wonder, and The Pull of the Stars, and I have given all of them four or five stars. So she is definitely an author where if I see a book of hers lying around, I will grab it. This one is set in the modern day. It follows an older man who is traveling to the French Riviera to uncover some history about his mother. And right before he goes on that trip, he gets a call that he needs to kind of take custody of his his great nephew because no one else can. He brings him along on this trip and it sounds like things may be tense at first but they're going to find out that they're actually a really good team and sort of help each other on this search for information and kind of grow uh, closer in the process. It's Emma Donahue so even if the book sounds kind of sweet and heartwarming there's always there's always gonna be like a little bit of something in there so I'm excited to find out what that little extra something is. That's it. Those are the 14 books that I have gathered over the last number of months. If you have read any of those books, please let me know what you thought of them in the comments down below. As always, our links are in the down bar. You can go check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you later.